Time of year when the jackets start to come out and the heat goes on. Will we see snow and how low will the temperatures go? The WRL severe weather team has your winter weather outlook. It's that time of year again. Our WRL severe weather team is ready to unveil our winter weather predictions. This year we analyzed four key factors. La Nina, accumulated cyclone energy or ACE, Siberian snow cover and climate trends. To kick things off, here's Elizabeth Gardner to discuss La Nina. According to NOAA, there's a 60% chance that a La Nina will develop later this month. In La Nina years, storm tracks stay north of our region and keep the colder air north too. So 64% of winters during La Nina result in below normal snowfall and above normal temperatures for us. So for snow lovers, it doesn't look that promising. But maybe Chris has some good news for us snow lovers. Let's send it to him to discuss accumulated cyclone energy or ACE. I'm afraid I've got more bad news for snow lovers. Since 2000, we've experienced 16 years of above normal accumulated cyclone energy or ACE with 10 of those years seeing below average snowfall. This year, the tropics have used up a lot of energy. Think of it like this. The atmosphere operates on a finite energy budget and this year, hurricanes, they consumed a significant portion of this budget by transferring heat toward the poles. This imbalance leads to fewer winter storms. Kat has something new we looked into for this year's forecast. So Kat, how in the world does Siberian snow cover help us to make these predictions? Studies have found a strong correlation between the extent of snow cover in Siberia in October and winter storms here in the eastern U.S. When Siberian snow cover is above normal in October, well, we've got a weaker polar vortex and that creates a more erratic jet stream. This allows the colder air to travel farther to the south. When the Siberian snow cover is below normal in October, it leads to a stronger polar vortex, which tends to keep the cold air locked in at the poles, resulting in milder winters for us here in North Carolina. This October, Siberian snow cover was below normal, and that suggests the coldest air gets stuck at the poles. More bad news for snow enthusiasts. Now let's turn to Mike for a closer look at climate patterns. If you've been in North Carolina the last several years, you know that snow has been hard to come by. In fact, we've seen a steady decline in snow totals over the last 75 years. The average annual snow for Raleigh over the last 75 years was nearly seven inches. The average over the last five years was a measly 1.7. Now, for the first time in history, there was no measurable snow at RDU last winter. Looking at climate trends alone suggests we will have very little snow this year. Snow lovers, you should likely plan a trip to a snowier place to get your snow fix. We're going only about zero to one inches of snow overall, and we expect temperatures to be warmer than normal. Oh, I'm just gonna 